Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Schuler. Uh, we are going to talk about carpal tunnel today um, to go over kind of the symptoms to expect as well as uh, potential interventions, uh, including surgery and post-operative recovery. So typical symptoms for carpal tunnel, uh, people usually say their hands fall asleep at night, uh, they get numbness, tingling, uh, lots of times people have problems while driving. Uh, and the reason behind this is the median nerve which runs through the uh, carpal tunnel at the wrist uh, gives feeling to the thumb, index, middle, and uh, half of the ring finger. Uh, when that nerve gets squeezed, typically you get numbness, tingling. Uh, anytime someone says numbness, tingling, pins and needles, burning, that's usually a nerve-related problem. Uh, the reason people have problems at nighttime is we like to sleep with our arms bent uh, like that. So if you bend your wrist down or you bend your wrist backwards, that increases the pressure on those, that nerve. Um, part of the reason or one thing that people typically describe is wearing night uh, splints. And the benefit of that is not that it'll cure it, it just prevents you from bending your uh, wrist at nighttime. Uh, driving lots of times causes problems, anything with vibration, so chainsaws, weed whackers, uh, hair dryers, vibrate, or uh, driving a car can all cause problems with that nerve. Uh, anytime a nerve is irritated, vibration will typically uh, really bother it. So these bones right here are your carpal bones. Uh, they make up a U like that, that hold all the tendons uh, like this that bend your fingers down. Uh, inside that tunnel is a nerve that gives feeling to this finger, your thumb, your index, your middle, and half of your ring finger. It does not typically involve the small finger or this half of the ring finger. On top of this, you use a ligament that runs from about here to here that holds everything in place. You get some swelling or inflammation in this area and it causes the nerve to be compressed. Uh, when that occurs, that's when you get the numbness, tingling, and burning in those three fingers. Uh, the typical treatment for this is to split this ligament. It pops open like that. Uh, the ligament scars in afterwards, uh, allowing more room for the nerve to breathe. So typically, if we're concerned about carpal tunnels, uh, we get EMGs and nerve conduction studies. Uh, usually insurance companies actually uh, require this uh, as part of making sure we know what we're talking about and performing a surgery that you actually need as opposed to another surgery. Uh, anyone uh, that comes in complaining about hand numbness and tingling, I typically use the illustration of a lamp at your house not working. Uh, if the lamp does not work, uh, it could be that you burn the bulb out, which would be something similar to carpal tunnel. Uh, it could be that you a fuse, which would be something in your brain. Um, it could be that uh, someone was mucking around in the walls and cut the wire that goes to the lamp, um, which would be something similar to your neck, your armpit, or anywhere that the uh, nerve runs along the, uh, the arm. And so we want to make sure we're uh, operating on the right area. Uh, the way we do that is obtaining EMGs and nerve conduction studies. Uh, specifically, uh, they will poke you with some pins and needles, uh, shoot electricity down those pins and needles. Sounds like a medieval torture test. It's not that bad. Uh, but what they're looking for is they're measuring how fast those nerves are conducting electricity. And if it's slowed as it crosses the wrist, and then that's uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, if it meets certain patterns, then it might be something wrong with your neck uh, or something else. And so, uh, again, we want to make sure we're performing a surgery that you need. And that's typically what those EMGs and nerve conduction studies help us to confirm. So assuming those uh, nerve studies are positive uh, and we're fairly confident you have carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, likely the uh, only real uh, definitive fix that's been shown to work is a carpal tunnel release. Uh, what that entails is splitting a ligament that's pushing on that nerve. Uh, we'll go over the brochure in just a second. Um, in regards to the surgery itself, uh, if we do an endoscopic carpal tunnel release, which is typically something that I uh, like to do, uh, it takes typically five to seven minutes of surgery uh, you wake up with an ACE bandage wrapped around your wrist. Uh, that stays on for approximately three, three days, uh, after which you can take it off and uh, get it wet uh, and start to really use the hand as much as you can. Uh, we do not fix anything with regards to the surgery itself, so there's nothing you will damage by doing really anything. It's uh, whatever you can tolerate, uh, you can start to do at any point. So this is a brochure we made for endoscopic carpal tunnel releases. Uh, the benefit of endoscopic carpal tunnel, we use a camera, which is here. You can see the very small incision that's required. We will uh, open this up, go through uh, what to expect in the actual surgery. So in a normal uh, open carpal tunnel release, you can see this is the type of incision you would expect. With the endoscopic, we make a very small incision right here. This is once you go inside with the camera, you can see this is the ligament we're trying to cut. That little point is a blade. 
Uh, we pull a trigger and you can see the blade rotates up and starts to cut the ligament right here. This is once we've gone through it once, some fibers still holding it together. We go through it a second time. This is the cut edge of the ligament. Here's the nerve in the open space. The other edge is off the camera right here. Uh, this is all you get uh, for a bandage with an ace wrap over top of it. And this is the, uh, the scar that you would expect at approximately a month out. You can see a closer up picture here. This is the small scar that you would expect. Don't let that scar fool you. We make a much bigger incision from approximately here to here. You'll be sore uh, in your uh, palm area for approximately uh, one to two months time. Uh, and again, this is what you would expect at approximately 10 years after surgery. Typically with uh, surgery, we do like to use general anesthesia. Uh, it takes about five to seven minutes, so it's not a lot of anesthesia. Uh, it helps me to sleep at night knowing you're gonna be asleep uh, and not moving so that we don't cut something that we didn't mean to cut. Uh, in general, if you have bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, we try not to do both at the same time. Uh, it makes it uh, difficult to take care of yourself, uh, eat, feed yourself, go to the bathroom uh, with both hands uh, wrapped and uh, immobilized. Uh, otherwise, uh, typically we'll see you back at two weeks uh, and whenever you're ready, we can uh, proceed with the second one. Uh, most people are usually glad they have one hand uh, free uh, to take care of themselves. Uh, additionally, if you're on blood thinners, we typically like to have you come off the blood thinners uh, prior to surgery. Um, if not, uh, if you can't come off blood thinners, we can certainly still do it. We just typically have to do it with an open procedure uh, to stop bleeding. So uh, post-op recovery, um, you will get a, a couple stickers placed over the wound. Uh, as you get those wet, those stickers will peel off. You'll have what looks like two pieces of fishing wire sticking out of the, uh, on each side of the wound. Uh, those can either be trimmed um, or uh, we'll trim them at the two week post-op mark. Uh, don't pull those, those are the stitches. They will dissolve, They're, the stitches are made out of sugar. Uh, most people uh, will be fairly bruised and sore, especially in the palm. Uh, uh, that uh, the ligaments cut uh, in between the palm, the muscles on both the thumb side and the uh, small finger side start on that ligament. Uh, you might have some difficulty making a uh, fist uh, or pinching, uh, which is again uh, very common. Uh, that will all resolve over time. Uh, we do not repair anything, so you will not damage anything by doing anything you can. Uh, you might be sore as you uh, proceed with uh, returning to normal activities. Uh, again, don't be surprised. Uh, if you uh, have some redness, soreness afterwards as you increase your activities. I uh, say it's similar to exercise. If you go out and exercise and are sore afterwards, you're not upset about that. Uh, you feel like you had a good workout. Uh, in a similar fashion, as you start to use this hand again, uh, you should expect some soreness and redness and swelling, especially after uh, increased activities. Uh, Anti-inflammatories, Advil, Aleve, uh, those type things, if you're capable of taking those, uh, will help even before you start the exercises or activities uh, to limit some of the swelling and soreness afterwards. So uh, with surgery, don't be in, uh, fooled by the small incision right here. Underneath the skin, we go from about there to there, and you're gonna be sore right here uh, for quite some time. And part of the reason is this muscle and this muscle start on the ligament that we cut. And so making uh, a, a pinching fit, uh, motion like this, making a tight fist uh, will certainly hurt in that area um, just until that area um, heals. Uh, again, the more you can use it, the more it will feel like yours. So I wanna talk about delayed recovery after carpal tunnel release at this point. Uh, some people will still have some numbness tingling uh, in the tips of their fingers. Uh, that can be fairly common. Uh, a lot of this depends on how bad the carpal tunnel was uh, before the surgery. Uh, the nerve will recover um, starting at the point where it was compressed and working its way out towards the fingertips. Uh, typically the last place that will recover is the fingertips. Uh, in general, uh, nerves can take uh, up to a, uh, a month to recover an inch uh, and so uh, to go from where the nerve was compressed out to the fingertips may even take up to six months. Uh, I typically uh, liken a nerve to fiber optics. Uh, there's one big tube uh, that holds the, uh, a bunch of little bitty tubes. Uh, in this case, as the nerve gets squeezed, uh, those little tubes might be, uh, be ultimately pinched off. Uh, when we release that nerve, all we're doing is releasing the pressure around it. Uh, at that point, the nerve has to pop back open and hopefully those small tubes open back up as well. However, if those nerve, smaller tubes have been compressed for a long period of time, uh, it might 
might not ultimately wake back up. And so that's when uh, you obtain, or that's when you get permanent nerve damage. Uh, there's not a lot that we can do about that. There's really no way to uh, determine if someone has permanent nerve damage before uh, surgery. Uh, really the best thing to do is uh, release the pressure uh, and see what uh, type of recovery occurs. Uh, obviously younger people, uh, a seven-year-old is gonna uh, recover faster than a 97-year-old. Uh, so really the nerve recovery is based on how bad the nerve has been squeezed, how long the nerve has been squeezed, and also typically the age and health of the patient uh, at the time of the release. So uh, as a wrap up, hopefully this has been uh, something that you've learned a little bit about and made a little bit of sense about with regards to carpal tunnel. Again, uh, numbness, tingling, burning, uh, those things are not common or not normal with, even as you get older uh, and certainly could uh, ind indicate something that needs to be addressed. Uh, this is not like uh, arthritis where uh, it's a grin and bear it until you can't grin and bear it anymore. Ultimately, you can cause permanent nerve damage if you just ignore this. Um, hopefully this has been helpful and I'm certainly happy to talk more and discuss any uh, other concerns you have.